Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering, where we will be introducing some important concepts which will help us throughout structural analysis. We will start off by reviewing the notion of force. A force represents any interaction which tends to change the motion of an object and has the following fundamental properties. Line of action, sense, magnitude, and point of application. For example, when kicking a ball up in the air, the force has a vertical line of action to raise the ball. The sense of the force specifies the direction in which the force moves along the line of action, so the kick will be positive against the line of action. The kick has a quantity of force that allows it to reach a certain height, and it is critical to kick the ball and not the air around it. For convenience, vectors are used to represent forces as they include all of these properties. The line of action is represented by the angle of the vector against a reference coordinate system. This can be calculated using trigonometry. In this example, the opposite side to the angle has a length of 3 and the adjacent side has a length of 4. So the angle theta is equal to the inverse tan of 3 over 4, which is 36.9 degrees. So the vector has a line of action of 36.9 degrees from the horizontal x-plane. The point of application is represented by the location of the tip of the arrow, so for us it would be the point x, y equals 2, 1. The magnitude of the vector is equal to its length, and for this we can use Pythagoras' theorem, where the length of the hypotenuse side of a triangle is equal to the square root of the opposite side squared plus the adjacent side squared. For us then, the magnitude is equal to the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is equal to 5 so we can say that the magnitude of the vector is equal to 5. And finally, the sense of the vector specifies the direction, either positive or negative, in which the force moves along the line of action. The sense can be represented by an arrowhead pointing in the active direction. So for us, as we are taking the positive x and y directions to be positive, the vector's direction is in the negative x direction and the negative y direction, it could also be described as down and to the left. Next, we will introduce a fundamental set of common units that are used for all quantities and ensure that different quantities are understood by different individuals. The UK, along with most Western countries, have adopted the international system of units, called the SI unit system. We use this system as it's extremely simple and consistent when compared to other unit systems. The relevant quantities for structural analysis are length, time and mass, and all other relevant quantities can be derived from these, including force, which as we will see is one of the most common units used in structural analysis. Length is measured in metres, time in seconds and mass in kilograms, and force is equal to mass times acceleration, or mass times distance divided by time squared, and so can be measured in kilogram metres per second squared, which is equivalent to newtons more conveniently. This unit system specifically allows for simple conversion between different units, for example from metres to centimetres. Excluding time and angle units, all unit conversions are based on a decimal system, and so, to convert between these units, you simply have to multiply or divide by 10 a certain number of times. These factors can be seen in the table here and are readily available online. Taking our example of metres to centimetres, let's say we have a measured length of 6.52 metres. Looking at the table, we can see that 1 centimetre is equal to 1 times 10 to the power of minus 2 metres. So, doing the reverse, we can calculate that 6.52 metres is equal to 6.52 divided by 10 to the power of minus 2 which is 652 centimetres. Now we will take a look at structures themselves. In general, civil engineering structures are very complex and almost always unique due to different location and therefore supporting ground, geometry and the loads applied. This combined with the expensive nature of experimentation for testing structures makes numerical models a more efficient and convenient method of verifying if a structure will fail or not. Some fundamental elements that make up structures include beams, columns, walls, slabs, and pad foundations, 
and these can be classified according to the relation between the dimensions along different directions. Linear elements have one dimension that is much larger than the other two dimensions. That is, the length is much larger than the width and depth of the element, and from our list above, beams and columns are classified as linear elements. Bidimensional elements have two dimensions that are much larger than the third. That is, the length and width is much larger than the thickness, and from our list above, walls and slabs are classified as bidimensional elements. And finally, three-dimensional elements have all dimensions of similar size. That is, the length, the width and the depth are all similar and from our list above, pad foundations are classified as three-dimensional elements. The diagram illustrates a structure including all three classifications of elements. The blue columns are linear, the grey slab is bidimensional and the red foundations are three-dimensional. In diagrams used for the numerical modelling of structures, linear elements, like beams and columns, are typically modelled as a line, as it's more convenient than drawing the true shape of the element. When using a line to illustrate a linear element, each point in the line has the properties of the cross-section. So, for example, let's say we have this steel I-beam. Taking the plane perpendicular to the axial direction gives us the following cross-section. So when drawing this beam in a structure as a line, we know that the line has this cross-section at any point along it. So to recap this introduction to structural analysis, we have introduced the components of a force and how we can visually represent a force using a vector. We know about the fundamental units relevant to structural analysis and that they can be used to derive any other quantity and we can easily convert between units. And finally, we have seen the various elements typically included in structures, and how linear elements can be conveniently represented by a single line on a diagram. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions, or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.